We'll go to the book of Acts, chapter number 16. I'm not sure everyone that's done the devotion in our absence and these conferences have been in, but I'm very, very grateful for their jumping in and helping when that's concerned. So let's go to the book of uh, Acts, chapter number 16, and I'm going to deal with uh, what Rock of Ages ministry is all about, about missions and dealing with the call of God and missionaries and uh, then also evangelization. So it's good to be back home, as I said earlier, and to be able to be in the pulpit here at the devotion time for the Rock of Ages. Let's go to Acts chapter number 16, and let me go straight to verse number 6, just to save a little bit of time with our, our reading of the text and so forth. The Bible says that when they had gone through uh, Virgia, they and the region of Galatia, and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost uh, to preach the word in Asia, after they come to Messiah, uh, they uh, say to go into Bethany, and then also, but the Spirit suffered them not. And they, passing by Messiah, came uh, down to Troas, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. And there stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, surely gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. I'm going to stop there just for the sake of time as we see, of course, uh, Paul's missionary journey and Paul's getting ready to um, endeavor upon what God has called him to do. And we find that well, while he's en route, that the Holy Ghost of God has forbidden him to go into Asia and preach the gospel. We find two times in the scripture that God had forbade uh, Paul to preach in certain areas and had redirected him. And so we find that the missionary, the apostle Paul, had endeavored and he had invested resources, time, and health to go into certain regions, and because there was an open door. And, you know, just having an open door doesn't constitute necessarily the call of God. Thank God for opportunities and where there's burdens and people that are interested in receiving the gospel and people uh, getting saved and giving their life to the Lord, but that does not constitute that God has called an individual to that specific area of location. Although, again, uh, there are many areas that need the gospel and there are doors that are open. As we consider this uh, passage of scripture, we find that God begins to deal with Paul and God redirects his ministry in verse number nine. And of course, we're all familiar with it, but here he says concerning the what's known as the Macedonian call, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night, and there stood a man of Macedonia and prayed to him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. And so I want to just give a, a couple of brief thoughts concerning answering the call. And this is not necessarily just for the individual preacher that is a, a missionary. Again, uh, often we get asked the question, how do you know the will of God? How do you know if, if God's called you to a specific area of location? And it's hard to decipher sometimes because, again, uh, just having a burden does not constitute the call of God. And just having an open door doesn't necessarily constitute the call of God. I hear Paul is on his way to Asia. He's going to preach the gospel. Uh, no doubt there was a need in Asia for the gospel. No, door, no doubt there was an open door for the gospel. And no doubt there would have been some reception to the gospel. But it wasn't God's will for him to go into Asia. It was God's will for him to go into Europe. And so as Paul's on his way, uh, God calls him. He gets the Macedonian call. And so how can we answer the call uh, concerning missions and evangelization? And so let me give just two or three very simple things, probably only get into one for the sake of time this morning. Uh, but first off, we can answer it with prayer. Notice, if you would, in the context of our scripture in verse number nine, and a vision appeared in, uh, uh, excuse me, a vision appeared to Paul in the night, and there stood in Macedonia, and watch this, and prayed him, saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. And so I believe that answering the call starts with prayer. I believe the uh, people on the field that are in need of help, that are in need of the gospel. Uh, often uh, there have been missionaries going to foreign fields that uh, they have visited or made survey trips and they receive statements from uh, the natives or the people such as this. Uh, we've been praying for a long time for God to send someone to give us the gospel. Or we've been praying that God would specifically send a missionary uh, to help us or a pastor to establish a church and a church plan. And so often it's not so much the individual that's praying. Oftentimes it's the mission field or the people that are praying and asking God to uh, send forth someone to bring the gospel of Christ with them. And as we consider this matter, 
Uh, there are many mission fields around the globe where there are people that are pleading for missionaries and the gospel to be brought to their people. The Bible uh, tells us that and teaches us in this passage of scripture, it started out with a man of Macedonia praying to God and asking the Lord to send someone and burden the heart of someone to come into Macedonia. And so we have the prayers from the field. If I could put it uh, this way this morning, we have prayers from the mission field. There was someone that knew about the gospel. There was someone that knew that their country needed help. And uh, there in Macedonia, they prayed to the Lord and the Lord heard a prayer and God passed that prayer along to the apostle Paul. And so we find that not only was it a prayer from the mission field, it was a prayer that God passed on to the missionary. Amen. And uh, so we need to be sensitive to the call of God and sensitive to what the Lord's doing in our hearts. As we consider <coughs> the matter, we often uh, have uh, preachers that will come to us and they inquire about Rock of Ages ministries, but their hearts and areas of ministry that uh, we're not involved with. And so, Brother Hooker, we're always pushing to a ministry that's involved with uh, that area of ministry, the type of ministry that they've established. But thank God along the way, there are some yeah. that have answered the call to go into the prisons and reach out through our prison prevention program into the schools and into the military uh, through our chaplaincy program and evangelism. And so thank the Lord that God answers prayer and God passes along the prayer and the burden of the people. And thank God too that Paul was sensitive right. to the Holy Spirit of God. I believe we live in a day and age where there are fewer God-called preachers than at any other time, at least in my life, in my livelihood, my existence, only 63 and a half years now, but um, used to, and I've said this repeatedly, you go into the churches when I was a young preacher, the churches would be uh, full of young preachers or at least have four to six preacher boys in the congregation. Now you're fortunate if there's more than just a pastor and possibly an assistant or associate. And uh, as we consider the matter, I don't believe it's because God's quit calling by the hard grave. I believe it's because man quit answering. Yeah. And honestly, I want to say to you, I put a push on the uh, foreign uh, international team over the last several years and also with our U.S. staff. And I've made uh, several statements over the years that I believe the international is where the majority of our growth is going to be over the coming years. And that's already uh, proven to be the case. But as we consider this matter and the fact that there's not as many young preachers in America, it's not Americans, let me put it this way, Americans in the condition we're in America today is not going to fulfill the Great Commission. We don't have enough missionaries. We don't have enough preachers. It's not to say that we can't, but there's going to have to be some young men that are willing to submit themselves and their will to the will of God and be willing to pay a price. Uh, to fulfill the call of God upon their life. And so as a result of that, we're going to have to lean on nationals. I'm talking about national missionaries, not paid missionaries, uh, that are helping us and partnering with us and things of that nature. I'm not against all of that. I'm not preaching against it, but I'm saying that it's going to have to lean on men who are stepping out by faith, just like missionaries in America, and willing to trust God to do a work and establish a ministry. And I have uh, pressed the international team, or at least encouraged the international team for a while, uh, to pray that God will raise up missionaries on the foreign field, nationals that will be there if the country closes, the doors close, they're there in their country, and they can continue to do the work of the ministry. When the Middle East closed down, thank God we've got a missionary there that lives there. He's Middle Eastern and he'll be there. Yeah. If Brazil closed down because of the socialistic government that's voted in, thank God we'll still have eight to nine missionaries living in the country that will be able to continue with the work and do the work that God's called him to do. And right down the line with Romania and other countries where the Lord has allowed us to establish foreign missionaries. That's indigenous works where those people are established and God called to do the work. Thank God, not only there was a prayer from the mission field and that God heard the prayer, God answered it, and God passed the prayer along to the apostle Paul. He heard the prayer of the Macedonian as he prayed and asked God to send help. And Paul answered that. God allowed him to answer that prayer. Paul was willing to listen to God's call for help on the mission field. And we need some young men today. I recently had the privilege of uh, contacting a couple of three young men that are in their late teens that are very sharp. God's got his hand on them. They're going to do a work for, uh, great work for him if they survive the testing. There's an old saying, we've said people shout amen, that faith that has not been tested cannot be trusted. 
And sometimes there are people that have been involved in ministries for years, but their faith has not been tested. They are not able to handle the great test that God puts them through. And so there has to be a testing time. There has to be a trying time. Church planners. It's often stated that it will take a church planner up to 10 years uh, to get a good, solid work established. That's not saying that there's not exceptions to the rule. I know exceptions to that rule myself. But I'm simply saying that it takes about 10 years because there'll sometimes be dramatic growth. But somewhere along the line, there's going to be a great test in the ministry of that local church and the pastor, the man of God that he sends. In Rock of Ages statistics and our demographics before Dr. Garris passed away, and I gave him the demographics of our missionaries, the reason they were resigning, and the longevity of missionary services, we determined that missionaries had had served with Rock of Ages 10 years and more, less than 4 to 4.5% 4 less than that, resigned from the ministry. They stayed with it. Underneath that, about five years, uh, it is up substantially over that. But once you cross the 10-year mark, uh, there, the statistics uh, dramatically increase. So there's about a 10-year mark. Oh, a person has to serve and he has to be tested. And I'm talking about somebody that's on the field doing the work. And so we find that to be true. Paul was willing to pay the price. He saw the vision of Macedonia, a uh, Macedonian man begging for him to come over into Macedonia and help him. And the Bible said that Paul immediately endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord was calling him uh, to go there into Macedonia and Europe. We can thank God for the Apostle Paul today in America because as he went into Europe, um, the church around 69 AD, because of his evangelism, had grown in around 69 AD. They moved from house churches and outside meetings to buildings such as we know it today and churches, and Europe became evangelized. And guess what happened from Europe? They moved from Europe into America, and America has been evangelized over these many uh, decades and sent out missionaries around the world. And I know we need a more evangelization today. I'm not say that, saying that we are completely 100% evangelized, but thank God from Paul's Amen. obedience to the Macedonian call, going into Europe and preaching in Macedonia, the gospel spread through Europe and eventually came to America. And then from America, missionaries have been sent literally around the world. We can thank God for Paul this morning hearing the Macedonian call. And it started with a prayer. Now don't tell me this morning that God doesn't answer prayer and that prayer is not important where missions are concerned. <clears throat> the executive staff has been fasting and praying for um, not quite a year, but upwards of a year, uh, once a month and just setting aside a day. And I told the staff, I said, if you've got health issues and uh, something comes up and you can't fast, we're in a day of grace. I understand that. But I'd ask you to fast. We set aside a specific day to fast and ask the Lord uh, for God called men and young ladies that are willing to serve the Lord. Of course, young ladies, not in preaching capacity, but serve the Lord. And to do the work of the ministry and discipling ladies and soul winning among ladies institutions and so forth. And God's been gracious to hear our prayers. And we've not knocked the doors down with missionary applicants. But I'll tell you what we have done. In the last three years, we've only lost one new missionary. Where before we had an 80% turnover in years past. And so as we consider the matter... I think God, God's still calling. God's still calling young men like TJ who surrendered uh, to preach the gospel some time ago. And uh, God's still working and God's still moving and God's still saving. God's given us a fruit for our labor in our meetings recently. One saved this past week to God be the glory. Amen. Nothing to do with us. But God's not there. You hear Amen. me this morning? God's still on the throne. His people are discouraged. They're fighting depression, discouragement. They're fighting circumstances that are setting them back. My friend, listen to me. God knew before he saved us. God knew before the foundation of the world, the difficulties we'd go through, the challenges and the struggles, but God's still on the throne. He hasn't forsaken his people. He said, I'm with you all the way, even unto the end of the world. And as we consider the matter, uh, even uh, David said in the Psalms, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He didn't say, they I walk into the valley of the shadow of death. He said, yea, though I walk through and the divine promise that God will take us through it. And I'm not saying anything that I haven't been through myself this morning, or I'd be speaking foolishly and out of turn. May I just say to you this morning, I thank God there's a call comes ringing over the restless waves, send the light, send the light. 
There are souls to rescue. There are souls to save. So let us be faithful and send the light. That's what we're all, we're all about. Um, our dear missionaries and all, not to say anything, I'll say our missionaries, the dear brother that lost his life in the Middle East just a few days ago and his wife and family are trying to get out to get back to the States and thank God they are uh, safe and everything's worked out for them to return. But he gave his life for the gospel. And missionaries who go to dangerous fields in this capacity, they know before they go, their life is on the line. There's a lot of the people today that are willing to do something for God as long as it doesn't call them out of their comfort zones. Their physical comfort zones, their mental comfort zones, their spiritual comfort zones, and their emotional comfort zones. And yet we find that all of those areas of ministries, we must surrender to God. We must commit them to God if we want to be used for his glory and honor. Else the Christian will be discouraged, despondent, and fight nonstop with the battles in their life and struggles. Let us come to the realization that God answers prayer. Amen. And God will send men and young ladies where he pleases. Well, our time's... Pass gone for a minute or two, so Brother Devin, if you would lead us in the course, please. <clears throat> Mercy. Let us send the light. There's a call comes ringing for the restless wave. Send the light. Send the light. There are souls to rescue. There are souls to save. Send the light. Send the light. Send the light. Send the light. Bless the gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. God bless you, let's get about our responsibilities. <laughs>